Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through the Gold Coast vs GWS game and I guess this game pretty much played out how I thought it would on the scoreboard. Um, a lot of the primos that were in this game actually failed and we also had the failure of the um, of I guess uh, Thomas. He really did fail which was absolutely perfect because if you actually look at him right now and this is after lockout has lifted so a lot of teams have probably already traded him out. He's got a 13 break even and scored a 15 and is up 28k for that effort and has pretty much stalled his whole cash gen. Um, so even if he scores another 20 or 30, that's still only another 10 to 15k. So those people basically traded him in for about 10 to 15k. And I almost traded him in until I realized that he had an, a, like a 15 or whatever and a, and a 23 before that 100. And I realized the West Coast matchup, it just, there was something in it that made me realize that it was going to be, a uh, most likely going to be a sort of, um, that 100 was going to be a red herring to what he actually would score and that seems to have run true as his position um, as a small forward seems to people have forgotten that they don't score well and Campbell is sort of this anomaly anomaly with that um, position so is Dempsey but Dempsey pushes up onto the wing as well whereas Thomas is just stuck in that forward pocket and similar to how Darcy Wilson was last week they can really struggle so um, before we get into this video, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload and let's get into the video. So Gold Coast, uh, 13, 11, 89, defeated by uh, GWS, 18, 9, 117. Um, Anderson, 113, he did really well, 34, 18, 29, 32. He just seemed to not stop like the other, um, other uh, primos that we see, especially on the GWS side. Uh, yeah, he was just really good and is only like 1.9% owned. So I'm glad to see that he didn't uh, really, no one really exploded in this game, which was a good thing. Flanders is 102 and I think he scored maybe a 120 something, 125 I think it was in Supercoach. So really good to see the, at least for me this week, when they had, um, when he had the, uh, I only had him in Supercoach and not Fantasy, to see him go large in fa uh, Supercoach, but not in Fantasy. Yeah, he scored a 125 in Supercoach, so he had almost a 1.2 multiplier on his, uh, on him, and I believe that was just down to his disposal efficiency, and let me just check that as I'm pretty sure he had, was really efficient with the ball, and that's the reason why he scored so well, but while I'm getting that up, oh, we'll move on to Closey, who I think is a rookie that obviously in AFL Fantasy you're going to jump on, has a minus 23 or something break even, and yeah, so I think he's one that you can easily jump on for Fantasy, and I think he's also given his price tag of 102k, I also think if it helps you to facilitate the upgrades for, say you're doing... Um, to mid prices or something and downgrades or whatever in Supercoach, I think you can uh, use him on the bubble. Uh, so before he's on the bubble, as he's already got a minus 62 break even, um, he basically needs to stuff up for like three weeks now to actually be a no-go. Um, so yeah, I just think he is so much value and um, yeah, so I think you can use him given he's 102k and not the basement 123k. And finally got the uh, disposal efficiency up and we see that Flanders used it at 82%, which is generally about 10 to 15% higher than most people would be using it. So that is the reason why he did so well in the end. And I'm just going to check his, what was his, six turnovers and I think like four clangers or something. It wasn't, um, where is his clangers? Does it show it? Uh, doesn't show it, it seems like. But yeah, he also somehow managed off the halfback two clearances. So yeah, he did all right, uh, Flanders. And that's why he had such a good split. Wits as a Ruckman against um, the likes of... Where is he? Uh, where is uh, Briggs? He's somewhere here. I could tell you. Kieran Briggs, 79. So yeah, he did all right. I'm not looking forward to seeing Marshall go crazy as I missed out on that trade by like 14k. As you'll see in my... Uh, preview that's how long it'll be uh you'll see that on like thursday uh but yeah so missed out on that um but which showed that you can score it seems like against gws you can score really well on the rucks so marshall i'm not looking forward to seeing that next week especially because a lot of people are just going to go the grundy to marshall trade 
Whereas I have to go around, I have to go roundabout ways to do that. I have to get in Flanders, Marshall, and Marshall slash English, given that we've heard both of them are sort of getting managed at this point. Um, and then I also need to get Dacos in in the next three weeks. So it just is a matter of the order in which I do that to see uh, the way I do it. Um, and then you've got, uh, let's see here, you got Mac Andrew here. He did really well. Um, in the end, nothing in the last quarter, which really, but he's not really fancy relevant. Lukosius, 86, a new role down there, so it'll be interesting watch. I don't think he's going to be at, uh, too fancy relevant at the moment, and you sort of can get three or four weeks to look at him, and then you can trade into him. Tug Miller finally failed, which was a good thing for non-owners, 24, 18, 28, 10. So he will be going down in cash. Ro uh, Raul, the same thing in 80 as well, 25, 21, 22, 12. So those two are going to go down in cash, and they're going to have big break-evens. Rose is 72, Ainsworth. Ainsworth, I swear, I kept on getting him confused with Flanders, which is not fun when you want Flanders to just be kicking efficiently, and Ainsworth is just, I think, butchering the ball. So, um, yeah, it wasn't fun trying to pick out which one was which. Um, Will Graham, he did really well, and is a rookie that, uh, super coach wise you can wait till he's on the bubble, and fancy, I think you may have to give it a miss at the moment, but we'll wait and see. Uh, could be one next week that you go Jai Clark or something down or whatever. Uh, Barry did all right. Fiorini, Ballard, Euland, Humphrey, Collins, Powell, Walter King, and then Holman, Reed, and Swallow. Uh, Reed with a 25 doesn't really look like he's got uh, his fancy ready yet, considering he kicked a goal and a behind and still only got to a, um, a 25. So I wouldn't be looking at him at all. Um, Canelio, 112. He did all right. He did really well. Uh, third quarter, he just came on and then just blitzed it. Got a goal. Got two goals in the third, which sort of shows you how he did it. So yeah, one twelve from him, really good. Whitfield, you'll see here, uh, got a one oh six, and you'll see he didn't actually score until the eighteenth minute of the second quarter, as you'll probably know by uh, uh, that by other people on Twitter, etc., that he had the concussion test as he had the blurry eyes. So he was uh, deemed all fine, came back on, and then just started to get a lot of plus sixes, as you can see here. Um, had a kick and mark, had a kick mark taken away from him. As well here, but you can see one, two, three, um, three, four, five, six, uh, six plus sixes after the time that he went off for the concussion test, as well as I believe a couple tackles. One, uh, two, th three. Where's the third one? Did he have three? Uh, no, just two tackles after that. So he didn't have too many tackles, but he still uh, tackled a little bit, uh, which was good for the. Uh, Fancy, and then he butchered the ball as well, which was good for uh, non-owners in Supercoach. Uh, Tom Green, uh, sorry, Toby Green, 92, looks to be probably getting suspended for that uh, dangerous tackle. So he did all right. He's probably going to be top 12 forward, but not a top six, just because others are going to have really good roles. And he's going to basically have to kick three or four in a week to get uh, up there unless he starts to um, have some rotations in the midfield. Tom Green, I'm happy as a non-owner. He missed his break-even by 23. His break-even now is going to be a large, I believe. Uh, if we just go to Green here. Um, he went down 15K. He's got a 137 break-even. So hopefully, even though St. Kilda is what I would deem to be a easier matchup, he should be able to go down in price again and start to uh, really go down as we look again quickly at Tom Green. You'll start to see that um, if he has another even 100 score, these sort of 145, 120 start to filter out of the system more and you start to see that that uh, break even will start to skyrocket towards 140, 150, 160 and um, that'll get him back down into the 900Ks very, very quickly and more attainable after his... Uh, buy in 12. So uh, that's my thoughts on him. Jesse Hogan kicked like four goals and still got an 88. Um, Kelly, 88. Himmelberg, 81. Briggs, 79. Ash, 69. That No one here really from GWS is relevant outside of Cornelio, Whitfield, um, Tom Green, to be honest with you. Uh, even Himmelberg, he was really well and then did nothing in the last quarter. So just shows that his role, I think, is sort of capping him at sort of this 90 or so range. 
and um, it's just a matter of when he gets that score. As you can see, a lot of it was in the first three quarters. And then down here, just looking for any rookies here, and Cabman, 42, ended up with like a 50 in Supercoach or whatever, and yeah. So uh, I think he still has a little bit of cash to um, to get on both uh, Supercoach and Fancy. I don't know what his, uh, let's just check here, Cadman. Uh, has an 18 break even, so that break even is probably a week away before being cashed out. And so, yeah, 42 was all right, but you really need to see him start king goals. And so it was all right for the cash gem, but I think that uh, cabin run is now over. Bedford, 31. Thomas subbed out on a 15. And yeah, as we talked about in the intro, I think that that was a, a massive red flag pick before it even came. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if he's... I would be surprised if he gets dropped necessarily, but I do think he is... His cash in is cooked and... Um, even a 40 has like a cash generation of only about like 15, 20k and he could easily drop another 15 or 20 and really start almost losing you money and could be that rookie that if, if you're like me with looking at house, um, could start you, he reaching his peak and could start really actually losing money back towards a 250k sort of range. So, um, yeah, Thomas is probably almost one that you only have one week left to see if he can pick it up again. But that is pretty much the video of the uh, Gold Coast vs GWS game and I'll see you guys in the, is it St Kilda vs Richmond or Richmond St Kilda game and then also you'll have the, uh, yeah, Richmond vs St Kilda and then you'll also have the Collingwood vs Hawthorne games uh, reviews today. So I'll see you guys in those one. Bye guys.